I've been trying to find a, a tutorial online, show people how to troubleshoot these issues, and to be honest, they all suck. So I'm making one. This one's comprehensive. We're going start to finish. Now, number one, whenever you start your game, uh, assuming you use Steam, I would recommend using Steam. If you're not using Steam, then the link you want to use is victoria2.exe with the Paradox logo, because whenever you start the game, you need to have this mod panel come up where you can select which mods you want to use. All right, so basics. This is something you can pick up anywhere. That is, uh, here I've got Victoria 2 installed in the Steam folder. We've got Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Victoria 2, and then we're in the Mod folder. And in the Mod folder, there's a dummy.txt. That's simply a text file that causes the Mod folder to be created. You can just ignore that. But whatever mod you're using, this is where you unpack it. And you have to have the .mod file. This is just a file that defines the parameters of the mod, for example, what folder it's going to use, that sort of thing, what the name is, how it's going to show up in the launcher. And then you have the mod itself, which is all the files that are going to replace and or be used in addition to whatever files are used in the base game. But before we get to the mod, first thing we have to do is make sure that Victoria 2 itself comes up with the proper checksum. So I'm going to launch Victoria 2 you're uh, using the launcher and not using the mod, so this checkbox is going to be uh, unchecked. This will take just a moment. Okay, so the reason I'm starting Victoria 2 without any mods is because if there's a problem with your base Victoria 2, then any mod that you try to use is also going to have those same problems. And what you'll notice here is in the bottom left corner, every time you load Victoria 2, regardless of whether you're using a mod or not, you have the version number. 3.03 for current heart of darkness and then you have four letters this is your checksum and for base game vanilla victoria 2 this should be nspy and clearly this is not nspy the reason for that is that i changed the base game and uh, what we have to do now is fix the problem so there are a few different ways you can do this and for all of these you have to shut down the game the quickest and easiest way is to go into your my documents Paradox Interactive, Victoria 2, and uh, this folder represents the base game plus all of the different mods that you have have different folders here. And clearly I've got a lot of mods here, but uh, what you can do is go into your map folder, and every mod has its own map folder, but here we're looking at the base game Victoria 2 map folder. So Victoria 2 map, and this folder, there's a subfolder called cache. Uh, this is where all the map pathfinding information is stored, uh, map appearance, that sort of thing. We're just going to delete this because oftentimes what can happen is the uh, the pathfinding, the terrain, names of provinces, that sort of thing, that can get messed up. And when that happens, it gets stored indefinitely. And this map cache uh, is taken into consideration when creating the checksum. So we're just going to get rid of that cache entirely and then load up the game. Now, most of the time, if you have a problem with your checksum, doing this will solve the problem. And again, I'm not going to be using the mods. So this is just base game, no mods. What you're going to see is, as the game is loading, it's now going to go through this process of creating the map textures. See, we're calculating paths. This may take several minutes. If you look over here, you'll notice that this new cache folder has been created. So this is now being populated with all the things that are being generated in-game. A couple things I'm going to show you here in a moment. First off, this takes a couple minutes. It's going to do all the pathfinding and everything. That all gets saved in the cache folder. You can see it's being populated. It's also creating textures. Okay, so that took a couple of minutes. I'm going to be editing that part out. Anyway, you can see at the bottom left corner, we've got four different letters now, U, U, Z, J. Now what happens is whenever the game creates the paths and the textures and everything and populates this cache, after it's done that, you get a different checksum here. So before we write this off as being incorrect, Let's shut it down and restart it. And remember these letters, U, U, Z, J. So we're going to shut it down, restart. And again, not use any mods, so base game. And this time we don't have to regenerate all the map info because it's been done previously. You notice now that U, U, Z, J has become W, uh, W, T, X. So this is the same checksum we had before. And that tells us that the problem was not in the cache folder, but it also demonstrates that the first time you generate a map cache, the checksum is going to be different than the second time. And every time after that first time, it remains the same. So this means we have a problem within the files themselves. So how do you fix that? I'm going to show you how right now. If we go to Victoria 2 Properties, 
We go to local files. Again, this is assuming you're using Steam. If you're not using Steam, I guess reinstall it however you happen to get it. Make sure your files are consistent with the current version of the game. Anyway, we're going to local files and we're going to verify integrity of game cache. And this takes a little while, so I'll be editing this out. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to go through file by file, look at every single file within my Victoria 2 folder, and make sure they are accurate for the current version of the game. Alright, so here we say 926 files failed to validate and will be reacquired. So basically what it's doing is it's re-downloading the game at this point. Alright, so that process is completed. Basically it's re-downloaded Victoria 2 and overwritten the various files and folders that are here. So if you have a default file that has gotten corrupted in some way, changed in a manner that alters the checksum, then this is how you would fix the problem and we'll see what happens in the end result of uh, this method of trying to fix it. So again, this is the second thing you can try if your base game doesn't give you that checksum NSPY. You can see here it's giving the same checksum as before, WWTX. So why is that? I'll show you. See, what I actually did is I went into events and I created a new file, AAA Delete Me. When you go to Properties, Local Files, Verify Integrity, this does is basically check all of the individual files that can be downloaded from Steam itself. Because this is an extra file, Steam can't identify that it's an extra file. So if you know you have this extra file here, for example, uh, some older mods actually had you overwrite the base game. And if you do that, that's going to change the checksum. So if you happen to know which file is the one that's giving you problems, you can just go in and delete that file. If you don't know which file is the one that's giving you problems, then you have to go back to the drawing board. So getting the right checksum on your base game is critical to everything else you do. So in order to fix this problem, you can delete local content, delete everything. We're uninstalling Victoria 2 right now. As you can see, folders are disappearing and whatnot. It does not delete your mods. So you can safely delete your Victoria 2 game information and all the files that were installed by Steam without wrecking your mods. So feel free to do this at any time. Anyway, Victoria 2 has been uninstalled. Now we have to reinstall it. Now Victoria 2 is being downloaded and whatnot. Let's see how long this takes. Probably not too long. If you happen to delete your game files and then reinstall it, it's probably not a bad idea to go into your My Documents Paradox Interactive Victoria 2 map and once again delete the cache. Just in case whatever got replaced over here happened to uh, wind its way into the cache that was generated previously. At any time, you can delete your cache for any mod or even the base game, but just keep in mind that the first time you load the game, it's going to have to regenerate the cache and your checksum is not going to be correct. Uh, so Victoria 2 has been reinstalled, DirectX is set and ready to go. We're going to try and load the game without any mods now. Uh, keep note of what's about to happen here because this is something you will very likely see at some point in your uh, time playing with Victoria 2. That's this really annoying error. Exception in virtual file system dot CPP line 662. And this is probably one of the most frequent troubleshooting questions that comes up on the Victoria 2 sub forum at the uh, Paradox Interactive forums. So the way to solve this, we're in Steam Apps, Common, Victoria 2. You go into the Map folder, you've got the Cache folder, you need to delete everything. Remember, map caches can be wiped out at any time, and we're going to do just that. We're going to delete the entire cache, and this is different from the cache in My Documents. This is the one that's in Steam in the Victoria 2 Program folder, the same one that you run the game from. So Map Cache, has been wiped out. Now we're going to try and load the game again. Victoria 2. Start game again using no mods. So now the new cache is being generated. Here we are in my documents, map cache. You can see this uh, folder is now being populated. So map logic is initializing. And this time we didn't get that 662 error. So we've solved that problem. All right, so the map has been properly initialized. The game has loaded up. You see here the checksum is PTIM. Now clearly that's not the NSPI that we're hoping for, but as you recall, every time you start, uh, every time you load the game and regenerate the cache information, you have to shut the game down, start it up one more time, 
and then see what the actual checksum is. So again, we're starting the game, no mods, and we'll see what happens. All right, so the game is loaded, and here we have the proper checksum NSPY. So at this point, we know that all of the base game files, the ones that uh, are supplied by Steam and or your installation, that these are working properly, and that nothing within the base game itself is corrupt. So if you don't have NSPY here, you've got a problem, you absolutely have to fix it. If you do have NSPY, then you can go on to the next stage, which is getting the actual mod to work. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we have Victoria 2, the base game folder, and within that there is a folder called mod. As I mentioned, it has dummy.txt, which is used to generate that mod folder. And by default, it has nothing else in there. But what I've done here is I've taken this uh, custom multiplayer edit of the PDM Apocalypse mod, and I've already unpacked it. So you'll need something like WinRAR, 7-Zip, WinZip would work maybe. Uh, basically, whatever format you're getting your mods in, you need whatever appropriate program to unpack it. And this is where you unpack it. And as I mentioned, the uh, mod file is the one that tells Victoria 2 the uh, different paths it's going to be using, what to name the mod, that sort of thing. And then the actual mod files are within the folder. So the easiest way to make sure that your mod is up to date is if you're in doubt, delete the entire mod, just like I'm doing right now, and then overwrite it. Now the reason for this is uh, the same issue that we had with the base game Victoria 2. If you have an updated file, the new version will overwrite the file. If you have a file that's been removed, and then you go to write over it, that old file's still going to be there, and that's going to mess up whatever checksum you're trying to generate. So whenever a mod has been updated, my recommendation is to delete the mod files, and then unpack a fresh copy, rather than uh, simply pasting over it, which might, in some circumstances, leave you with that extra file that's going to mess you up down the, down the road. So we have a fresh version of the mod. Now we're going to load the game and actually use the mod. So over here we have PDM Apocalypse Edit. We'll put a checkbox next to that and start Victoria 2. So the base game has a map folder and a cache within it, and this is the generated map texture files, pathfinding, all of that. Now each mod also has its own map cache. So here we've got map, cache, and it's generating these same exact files. So the first time you load up a mod, this takes a couple minutes. All right, the map has been initialized. Everything is loaded. And here we see that the mod itself has come up properly. However, the checksum here is not the one that's expected. And I know that because I've played around with this mod. So we know that the checksum is wrong, but we also know that the first time you load a mod, or really any time you load Victoria 2 and it generates anything in the cache, the checksum is going to be wrong. So let's load it up one more time. We'll go Victoria 2, check the mod that we're using, start Victoria 2. And now the second time the mod's been loaded, this time with no changes to the map cache, we get the proper checksum, which is Tox Z, perhaps the coolest checksum ever in the history of Victoria 2, which is why this mini mod is called Tox Z. So. Uh, if you're interested in this multiplayer campaign, obviously you're welcome to join us and whatnot. You can, of course, check that out on my channel as the weeks go by. Uh, that's how you troubleshoot mods in Victoria 2. And uh, if you happen to have any problems with the checksum, checksum is the most important thing because your checksum has to be identical to the checksum of whoever is hosting the game. So without the proper checksum, multiplayer is impossible. So you absolutely must be able to diagnose these problems on your own. If at some point the map cache gets corrupted, a very simple fix, for example here in Victoria 2 folder, this is my documents, Paradox Interactive Victoria 2. There's a folder here that's been generated for the mod that we just loaded, that's PDM Apocalypse. And within it there's a map folder, as I mentioned each mod has its own map folder. Within map there's a single folder cache, and if you think there's any problem at all with your map cache if you get the wrong checksum some point down the line let's say it's working one day and then you load it up in a week and you get the wrong checksum then the easiest thing to try to do to fix the problem is to go into your my documents victoria 2 your mod folder map and delete the cache just get rid of it entirely 
and then regenerate it to see if that fixes the problem and probably four times out of five that will do the trick all right so that was my comprehensive guide to troubleshooting mod checksum issues and getting mods up and running in the first place so to reiterate number one thing to do is make sure that your base game checksum is NSPY if it's not there are a couple ways you can go about fixing that number one is to go into your base map cache clear it out see if that solves the problem number two would be to uh, basically reinstall Victoria 2 and make sure that uh, any extra files have been removed and uh, after you've done that of course make sure that you load the game twice the first time generates the map cache the second time uses the generated map cache and your checksums will be different both times after you've got NSPY, then you can go and actually install the mod, which is uh, just take it and unpack it into the mod folder within your Steam Apps Victoria 2 or wherever Victoria 2 is installed. And uh, once you've done that, if there are any problems getting the right checksum, then I would again recommend going into My Documents, Paradox Interactive, Victoria 2, and the mod subfolder in this case, and then delete that maps cache and then regenerate it and of course load it two times. So hopefully that was useful for you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you feel like it, you can like, subscribe, all that fun bullshit. Uh, but more important than that, if you want to join us for any of the multiplayer campaigns, there are three active campaigns currently running. The Friday Casual, which is where we're going to be playing this PDM Apocalypse mod. There's the Saturday Ranked Games run by Slazer. Those are pretty fun. And then there's the Sunday Games, which are kind of a clusterfuck, but, you know, if you want to see things going crazy I guess that's kind of interesting in its own way so uh, yeah thanks for watching and have a good one